And we are live. Welcome to the NBA Strategy Show. It is Friday, March 29th. I am Josh Engelman here to break down a 10-game NBA slate. We have an absolute ton to talk about. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live, and follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman. Also, shout out to, and I don't have it on the screen for reasons that I don't no, why is that not showing up? Oh, I know why it's not showing up on the screen. That makes a lot of sense. Let's fix that problem quickly. And boop, there it is. Shout out, top of the screen, DraftKings pick six. If you haven't signed up there yet, link in the description. Do that now. We'll talk about them in a little bit. But first, we just got to talk about yesterday. Um, Thought I was going to pick up the dub on prize picks. And then... This happened. Herb Jones makes one free throw with 28 seconds to go, makes a second free throw with 28 seconds to go, and grabs a defensive rebound with nine seconds left to beat us by the hook. There's not much that's going to be more frustrating to lose a PRA that's already been locked in for the win. No rebound there? Dub. Instead, the L. Now, we have a ton to talk about for today. And we got to be out of here pretty promptly because coming up after this 11 a.m. MLB strategy show, you don't want to miss it. Baseball is here. So we have a hard out later tonight, 5 p.m. Eastern time, MLB live before lock. 6 p.m. Eastern time, myself and Eric are back for NBA Live Before Lock, and we are going to have an absolute ton to try to break down in that hour. We finally close out the day on Playback. Playback.tv slash stochastic. Come watch the games with us. Sweat bets, sweat news, sweat DFS. Just hang out. Whatever you want to do, guys, we can do it at Playback. If you have League Pass, you could watch with us. If you don't, one of our 40 VIP passes can get you League Pass for the night. But yeah, I'd love to... I'd love to just chop it up here, but we got to get into this right now. Too many games to talk about, and we are going to start this one off the best way we know how. Golden State Warriors, 12-point favorites in Charlotte, 217 total. Oi, this is the interesting spot because Charlotte stinks. We know that. It helps to, to face a crappy team. 28th in defensive rating, but 26th in pace. Warriors uh, have a Q tag on Jonathan Kaminga. We also have a Q tag on Dario Saric. 14% ownership currently coming into Clay Thompson. Another 10 to Draymond Green. I, on the other hand, am not very fond of getting to the Warriors. They lose 2.7 possessions below their average. This is a very big pace down spot for the Warriors. Even though you're making it back on the defensive end, they are playing quite slow. I barely got to Golden State. Now, we do have Steph, which is oddly odd here. Steph is the one guy that got to double-digit optimal. Draymond didn't, even though he's in double-digit ownership. Clay didn't, even though he's in double-digit ownership. So I have a very minimal amount of Golden State, and I don't really see them as a team that I'm super worried about. The highest-ranked guy that I have for the Warriors is Andrew Wiggins at 60th, or Clay at 61st. These guys are pretty far down the list of my priorities, and I don't really anticipate having a ton of the Warriors. Stochastic Sims see it a little bit different, but it's basically just holding hands with the field. 11% exposure to Steph Curry, 9 to Draymond Green, 6 to Clay. It's a little bit of exposure to the Warriors, but nothing too crazy. And I, it, I just don't see this as a game where I'm going to have a lot of priorities, at least not from the Golden State side. Mm. Oh, that Gatorade is hitting the spot. We'll keep it moving. We'll go to the Charlotte side. Now, this one's a little bit different for me. Uh, call it 10% ownership to Misich, 10% ownership to Bridges, around 10 to Brandon Miller. It's 24 to Bridges and 20 to Misich on FanDuel. So very different plays there. I'm getting to Bridges. I'm over the field. This is a, a decent enough spot for Charlotte. I'm also close to 2x the field on Brandon Miller. 
He's a fantasy point per minute guy. He plays about 34 minutes a night, 6,400 shooting guard, small forward eligibility. I have my eye on Miller and Bridges. I'm also getting to a little bit of Grant Williams, who's only 4,200. Uh, not like an overwhelmingly awesome option, but probably the best point per dollar play on the Hornets. Kind of like it. I've got a decent chunk of exposure coming into to Charlotte here. Three guys north of 10. Bridges and Brandon Miller in that 20 to 25 range. So I see myself getting to the Charlotte end of this one a bit more than I see myself getting to the Golden State side. Now, if we look at Charlotte in the Stochastic Sims, 18% exposure to Miles Bridges. Looks like I'm in agreement. Uh, 17 percent exposure to Trey Mann. Now I have him, but that's a pretty big stand for us in the Sims. I mostly just think he looks good, not great. Misich got to 14 percent. Poku got to 11. Brandon Miller got to eight. Grant Williams got to five. There's a lot more to like here for Charlotte than there is for Golden State. Mm. Hitting the spot, man. Feeling dehydrated. Uh oh, did we just get news? Marcus Morris is signed with the Cavs for the rest of the season. Awesome. All right, next game. The Los Angeles Lakers, three and a half point dogs in Indiana, 242 total. The next closest game in a total today is 227 to Detroit and Washington. This is 15 points ahead of that. Very, very different experience. However, we don't exactly know what we're going to get out of the Lakers today. We have a Q tag on Anthony Davis and a Q tag on LeBron James. 19% ownership coming into AD. Power forward center eligibility. Keep an eye on that one. That's helpful to say. Uh, nothing else. 6% to LeBron, 3% to Russell. I'm under on AD. I have him ranked 32nd on the slate. Um, we have him 17% optimal, 19% owned, so he looks good. A little bit of negative leverage, or sorry, positive leverage, rather, on LeBron James, but not a guy I'm really getting to. Clearly, the spot's fantastic. Indy plays fast. They don't play very well defensively, and they have an offense to support it. I wish that I had a little bit more AD, but we've got some guys in the rest of this show that we're going to talk about. If we look at it on the stochastic side, I'm guessing we see AD here. Oh, yeah, we got AD here. 45% exposure to Anthony Davis. Um, site has him about a point and a half ahead of me. I think that's probably causing a lot of this, but that power forward eligibility is carrying a lot of weight. That's a That eligibility really helps out Anthony Davis. LeBron even showed up in 10%. I'm not surprised that I don't have more AD, but I went 37 minutes. I feel like I've got a pretty lofty projection on him. I just don't think... I don't think this is the spot. I really don't. 1.45 fantasy points per minute for Anthony Davis. He's been at 1.5 lately. I'm happy with my projection. I just think that I'm going to end up being a little bit light. In terms of pay-up options for the day, I don't really have a lot at the top. We only have four guys north of 10K. That's LeBron, it's AD, it's Wemby, and it's Jokic. But I'm more heavily exposed in the uh, in the 7K range, and we'll get to that in a bit. For the Pacers, 15% ownership to Halliburton, around 15 to Siakam, around 15 to Miles Turner. 10 to Neesmith, 10 to TJ McConnell. Now, I'm liking this team a little bit more. As per usual, I have a decent stand on Aaron Neesmith, 4,900, shooting guard, small forward eligible. We only have him 7% owned. Um, I have him in 22% of my stuff. That position and price to start this day, I love it. I love it. But Miles Turner is my dude today. 6,400, center only. I got him 2x the field. I have 35%. He's 18% owned. I took his prize picks over already today. This is a spot where the Lakers don't offensive rebound at all. Miles Turner is an above average offensive rebounder. Lakers give up a lot of threes. Miles Turner tends to take more threes than most centers. So I like this spot quite a bit for Miles Turner. 
I have a little bit of Siakam. I actually have a little bit of Tyrese Halliburton, which is kind of crazy. Not a guy that I've been getting to as of late. 8,900 point guard only, 16% owned. He's in 13% of my lineups. I'm way more interested in the Pacers side of this game than I am the Lakers side of this game. The curious part for me will be, do the stochastic Sims feel the same way? And that answer is yes. 53% exposure to Miles Turner. Write it down. First guy on the list of what we would consider to be our core for today is going to be Miles Turner. We also got to 37% Halliburton. Now, I'm not that heavy on Halliburton, and we do have him with a little bit of negative leverage, but I do like the fact that we're getting there. Uh, I think he's well worth this $8,900 price tag. Um, very little else, though. Coming out of the stochastic side, 5% of Neesmith, 4% of Siakam, a couple shares of McConnell and Nemhard. I see Neesmith differently. I tend to project him very differently than most. Like, I got him at 27 fantasy points. We have him at 24 and a half. He's been really bad since he came back from his injury. 0.72 fantasy points per minute. But he's still out there playing 30 minutes a night, and he's still out there playing shooting guard and small forward. So I get it. That's the type of ownership, though, that goes away as new value comes out. The Turner on the Turner ownership, on the other hand, that one's sticking around. He's a core play today. Whew, out of breath already. They talked about two games. Mm. Oh, Bug Boy, I didn't see that you were here. You can uh, you can hop into the MLB Strategy Show at eleven and eschew the virtues of Rangers nine hole hitters that are overrated. It really does, Jake. It really does. L.A. Clippers. This is a very easy game to talk about. They're one and a half point favorites in Orlando, and we have a 210 total. Clippers have everybody available. Orlando has everybody available. This is a matchup against the number 28 team in pace and the number 22 team in pace. 18th in defense, second in defense. Orlando not very good offensively. 2% ownership to Harden or Kawhi is the most that anybody has on DraftKings. Nobody got to more than 5% optimal. I don't have a single share of a Los Angeles Clipper today. And I think that's exactly how it should be. Stochastic Sims got to two shares of James Harden, and that's it. There is nothing here for the Clippers. And the faster we stop talking about them, the faster we can talk about things that actually matter. Orlando. There's one guy and one guy only, and it's the same guy that's been getting a lot of love lately. That's going to be Cole Anthony. Over a fantasy point per minute, 18% ownership. He's in 25% of my lineups. We have Cole Anthony, 15% optimal, 17% owned. He's very clearly the best guy that you can get to from Orlando. Um, really nice point per dollar play. He's 4,500. He has an MPE. After that, maybe a little Franz, probably not much else. Uh, the, the key piece that you can get to is Cole Anthony, and that's DraftKings. FanDuel, on the other hand, Cole Anthony's 5,800. Stephen Leibowitz, we had that by a mile. Never a doubt. Never a doubt. I'm quite confident that when we pull up Orlando in the stochastic sim, we're going to see something very obvious. We're going to see Cole Anthony and nothing else. 33% exposure to Cole Anthony. Basically nothing of Franz, Mo Wagner, John Isaac. Write it down right now. Part of the core for today, Cole Anthony. So it's Cole Anthony and it's Miles Turner. Two of our main priorities so far on this slate. All right, guys, hit that like button if you haven't done it yet. That would be incredibly helpful. Schedule for the rest of the day, we already touched on it. MLB Strategy Show coming up next. MLB Live Before Lock at 5. NBA Live Before Lock at 6. Uh, prize picks coming up at 7 o'clock. Lots going on. Maybe you guys should do this. Ooh, there it is. The promo code is DINGER. 30% off any MLB package you want. If you just want the lineup generator, you can use that promo code. You want just data, you can use that promo code. You, you want the full Sims package, you could use that promo code Dinger. Or you could get it for a week. You can get it for a month. Whichever what you want to do on the MLB side. MLB DFS is here. We kicked it off yesterday. We're back again today. And it's not going anywhere until September. Come join us. Maybe 
It could look a little bit like it did on FanDuel yesterday. FanDuel standings, main contest, 100K winner, Stochastic Avatar. That could be you. All you have to do is sign up using the promo code DINGER. There's links in the description, or you can just type it in on the site. But click the link if you want. Come join us for MLB season. It's a great time. And then you can go watch uh, the MLB strategy show right after this. Uh, Joseph, I don't see AD the same way the site does. So that I'm only going to say, like, write these guys down if I'm on it and the site's on it at the same time. I think that's like a, a good way to sift through everything that we have. Feels easier. By the way, Andrew Nemhard over three and a half assists is plus 135 on Fanatics. It's only been there for three minutes. If you can get it, get it. 15% expected value and a 47% odd shop or a 47 odd shopper rating. Go out of your way to get that quickly, along with under eight and a half points, plus 129 at Caesars. 10% expected value, huge rating. Of the two games we've talked about, or three games we've talked about so far, that Nemhard bet and the Nick Richards bet are what you want. Odd shopper, baby. Use it. I'm telling you. It's awesome. Detroit Pistons. Four and a half point dogs in Washington. 227 total. Hard to really talk about the Pistons right now. Cade's questionable. Jaden Ivey's questionable. We have no idea what these guys are doing. 10% uh, ownership to Cade if he's in. 10% ownership to Chimetsi Metu. Um, everybody else is single digits. We do have 28% uh, ownership coming into Tosan Uh 3,900, small forward only on FanDuel. Heavily owned because of that positionality and price. Not a great per minute, dude. If we look at the optimal rates, Metu got to 11. Everybody else is in single digits. There's not a lot here to like for Detroit right now if Cade and Ivy are in. If we get one or both of them out, that might change a lot because of how good this matchup is against the Wizards. Fastest team in the league, second worst defense. Stochastic Sims, I can't imagine have a ton here of Detroit. Oh, a little bit different. Chimetsi Metsu, 25% exposure. Not crazy to me at all. 4,600 power forward center, likely starting, playing in around 28 minutes. Might look even better if Cade goes away or if Ivy goes away. But a guy that I want to get to, maybe just not as much as we're getting to him here. So don't write that name down. Wizards. This is where we start talking. Oh, I'm so tired of this team. So no Bilal Koulibaly. No Rashawn Holmes, no Tyus Jones, no Livers, Omer Yuri, or Landry Shamit. 48% ownership to Marvin Bagley, 30 to Kuzma, 20 to Denny, 20 to Poole, 10 to Kispert, 10 to Jared Butler. I got way bigger stands on this Washington team. 88% of my lineups contain Marvin Bagley. Assuming he's going to play 27 minutes somewhere in that neighborhood as a starter. We got him in for 27 minutes. I think he's one of the best plays that you can get to today. Kyle Kuzma, 8,300. He plays 36 minutes a night. He's very clearly the best player on the Wizards. He's around 30% owned, and he should be. That's exactly what I have. I want to get to Jordan Poole. 6,800, point guard, shooting guard eligible. They're taking on the Pistons. The Pistons are awful. Poole has a 29% usage rate with the guys that are available, 28% assist rate, 1.2 fantasy points per minute in this spot. He's 20% owned. I have 40. I am more than happy to get to Jordan Poole right now. I think he is getting underrepresented. I have him as the third best play on this slate. But I don't stop there. $7,300 small forward Denny Avdia is in a great matchup. He's 20% owned. I have 28%. Kispert should certainly see a ton of minutes and a ton of shots. He's 8% owned. I have 10. The only guy that I'm not really getting to that has any ownership is Jared Butler. But I am taking a massive, massive stand on the Washington Wizards. So much so that I have no other team with this much exposure. This is my favorite team on the slate. Not to mention, it's also the heaviest owned team 
on the slate. This is the chalk play, but it should be. We're facing the Pistons. Now, if we look at the Washington side, who are we adding to the list? 70% exposure to Marvin Bagley. Add him to the list, baby. We got another center to join Miles Turner. 53% Kyle Kuzma. Write that bad boy down. Add it to the list. We have another name. Two people from Washington. We did get to 17% Jared Butler. That's not a direction that I am going right now. And the site's much uh, much lighter on Corey Kispert, Avdia, and Poole. I'm a much bigger believer in certainly Avdia and Jordan Poole. We're aggressively fading those two guys. I see it a little bit different. I'm also five fantasy points ahead of us on Jordan Poole. I got a big, big number on Poole in this spot. Um, similarly, for Denny Avdia, I have about four additional fantasy points. So I'm a much bigger believer in the Wizards. But now we have four guys on our short list. Oh, Ron, it's not. There you go. All right, 223 people in the door. Hit that like button if you haven't done it yet. We're four games in. Got to keep the pace moving. MLB strategy show coming up after this. Chicago Bulls, four and a half point favorites in Brooklyn. 214 total. Bulls are at full strength. At least it seems like that's going to be the way that this one shakes out. Uh, probable tag on Alex Caruso. Probable tag on Io Desumu. Everybody else that's normally in or out is 16% ownership coming into Caruso. Third, or he's 5,600. He does have shooting guard small forward eligibility. Not as big of a believer here for me. Both of these teams are like average-ish defenses, but they both play relatively slow. 20, 20th in pace for Chicago, 21st for Brooklyn. It's just not that great of a spot. I don't have more than 3% of co anybody, and that's Kobe White. Lots of ownership coming into Caruso on FanDuel as well. We have Caruso 13% optimal and 15% owned. I'm guessing we don't have a ton of Caruso. We definitely don't have anybody else in the Stochastic Sims. Yeah, 19% Caruso. Not surprised. Right around the ownership. I assume he's hard-coded with a little bit of a boost because of Alex Baker. Uh, very little exposure coming into the rest of Chicago. So I don't have really... Anything else to say here about the Bulls? This is not a fun matchup. Not a great total. Neither offense is very good. Think about this. Here are the ranks for offensive rating, defensive rating, and pace for both of these teams. Think about this range. The Bulls are 19th in offense, 20th in defense, 20th in pace. Brooklyn is 21st in offense, 19th in defense, 21st in pace. All six of those categories, three each, are between the 19th rank and the 21st rank. These are the exact same team. It's so weird. Now we go to Brooklyn. Now Brooklyn looks a little bit better. We have 25% ownership coming into Trendon Watford on DraftKings. 10 to Cam Thomas. 15 to Schroeder. Around 10 to Bridges. Still some scattered ownership everywhere else. I'm getting big time to the Brooklyn side. Give me Cam Thomas. I went 37 minutes. He's shooting guard only. He's in 30% of my lineups. We have him 12% optimal, 10% owned. I'm a huge fan of Cam Thomas today. I'm also a huge fan of Schroeder. I'm over the field. He's 14% owned. By the way, I have Cam Thomas fifth today. Uh, I'm over the field on Schroeder. I'm not getting to the ownership of Trend and Watford. He's 3,100 power forward center. That ownership's not going to be there by the end of today. We will get better value than Trend and Watford. And that'll just come down a little bit. But I do want to get to him a little bit just because of the power forward eligibility. I have about 10% of Dorian Finney-Smith, Mikkel Bridges, Nick Claxton. I think Brooklyn's a little bit of a sneaky team today. I'm really hoping that we see some love in the Stochastic Sims and we could add another, another guy to the list. And we do. Oh, no, we don't. It's 35% exposure to Trend in Watford. I can't join that one for the list. Stochastic Sims are a big fan, however. 18% exposure to Schroeder. I'm in agreement that it's high. I wouldn't say that he is on a short list. Then it's very thin for everybody else. 9% Cam Thomas, 5% or less for everybody else. 
I'm a bigger believer in Brooklyn. I kind of feel like uh, Brooklyn and Charlotte are sort of my teams for today. But I think there's a lot to like here for the Brooklyn Nets. Still without Cam Johnson. They are getting Dennis Smith Jr. back for this spot. But I'm a big believer in Cam Thomas, and I love him in GPPs today. The Philadelphia 76ers are eight-point dogs in Cleveland. 212 total. There is no ownership coming into Philly. 4% is the most of anybody on DraftKings. Tobias Harris got to 10% on FanDuel. I got to 9% of Maxi. I have him ranked 46th. So we're not exactly talking about something that I think is amazing. Oh, I also got one share of Kelly Oubre. Uh, we didn't get anybody into double-digit optimal. We already know what we're going to see here, which is basically nothing in the stochastic sim. 2% to Maxi. Without any news, we could write off Philadelphia. And we could probably write off the Cleveland team. 5% ownership to Jared Allen right now. He's 12 on FanDuel because of the power forward eligibility. Nothing else. Single digit optimal to everybody. Oh, by the way, big news here. Probable tag Darius Garland. Questionable tag Donovan Mitchell, who may be back with his nasal fracture. If Mitchell's back, that kills everybody here. Even if he's not, it probably kills everybody here. We're not going to be getting to Cleveland. The stochastic sims are about to show you the exact same thing. 2% to Jared Allen. Philly Cleveland is a lot like Clippers in Orlando. But Philly Cleveland doesn't have a Cole Anthony. So it's worse. This might be the least exposed game. Let me take a look. This is the second least exposed game on today's slate. Very, very little coming into these two teams. It's bleak. It's quite bleak. All right, guys, before we keep going, I do want to hit on DraftKings. Pick six season, everybody. You see the banner at the top of the screen. Get a 100% deposit match bonus up to 100 bucks in pick six credits if you sign up using the link in the description. This deal only lasts until March 31st. You have two days after this to get in if you haven't done it yet. Minimum deposit is five bucks. If you're looking for pick six plays, I know for a fact that Eric puts out a pick six video every day. Probably on the Odd Shopper channel, maybe on the shorts. I don't know that for sure. That makes me bad. But we have pick six content out there for you. You can find more at Odd Shopper if you're interested. We got a lot going on in the pick six streets. DraftKings putting a lot of time behind it. I wish that I could play it. It is not available in North Carolina. So unfortunately, I don't have anything personal to add here. But you can sign up for pick six. If you like pick them sites, I think you'll like the, pick up, uh, the format of DraftKings. It's going to be a little bit different. And I think that opens you up to more potential profits because this is going to be peer-to-peer. -peer. Link in the description, guys. Sign up for DraftKings Pick 6. Portland Trailblazers, 14.5-point dogs in Miami. That has a 209 total. Portland has a questionable tag on DeAndre Ayton, a questionable tag on Ashton Hagens, and a questionable tag on Matisse Thibel. Doubtful tag once again on Jeremy Grant. Tumani Kamara is going to be out for this one with a left rib contusion. We have 20% ownership coming into Ryan Rupert, who got the start last time out, 10% to Jabari Walker, and another 10 to Delano Banton. I'm basically right in line with the field here for Banton, for Walker, for Rupert. Do I think they're priorities? Not really. I do have Rupert ranked 10th, so he's pretty close to it. I kind of like Scoot as a sneak play tonight. Over a fantasy point per minute. Just has to keep himself out of foul trouble, but tough sledding against this Miami team that is ninth in defensive rating and dead last in pace. We did get Ryan Rupert up to 13% optimal, but that is some pretty sizable negative leverage. The stochastic Sims will tell the story here. Do we want to prioritize anything from the Portland Trailblazers? The answer is yes. 
Let's add Ryan Rupert to the list. $3,400 shooting guard only. He's in 27% of the lineups created on Stochastic. If we got a guy north of 20% and he's 20% owned, we're going to add him to the list. And he's a great value play. He's not a great play in terms of like an actual basketball player. 0.65 fantasy points per minute for Ryan Rupert. It's not good. It's it's pretty brutal. But the price tag is there for you. And I think it's a nice value piece to start the day. If we As we get more value, he's the type of guy that'll go away. But I like it. I like it. Only 6% to Banton, only 5% to Walker. Being in and around the field on those guys, I think, is totally fine. For Miami. The highest owned guy on Miami on DraftKings is Bam Adebayo at 7%. On FanDuel, it's 14 to Bam, 13 to Terry Rozier. Jimmy's probable, Hawkes is probable, Love is probable, Martin's probable. All the guys that have been out are out. I got to 3% of Terry Rozier. We have 6% optimal on Bam Adebayo. There's not a lot here for Miami, and I am quite confident that we're not going to see any, we're not going to be adding anybody to the list. Two lineups with Terry Rozier, one with Bam Adebayo. It's just a really tough spot to want to get to. They're just not that kind of team. 209 total. This game has the lowest total on today's slate. Portland's implied total, 97. Yuck. All right, three to go. We are flying through this slate. So fast that I didn't realize that it was moving as quickly as it was. Phoenix Suns. Two and a half point favorites in Oklahoma City. 226 total. This is one of the higher totals on the slate. We only have three games north of two third or north of 225. It's this game, it's the Pistons and the Wizards, and then it's that Lakers Pacers game. Now there's no ownership coming into Phoenix because they're at full strength. And when Phoenix is at full strength, it's difficult to get here. They're very similar to Boston in that regard. Yusuf Nurkic is questionable. That could change things. We could open up some value if Nurk ends up out. But for now, I got a little bit of Bradley Beal and nothing else. No one got to 10% optimal. And it's obviously a very difficult spot. It's not as difficult as it normally is against OKC, considering uh, it's not likely for us to see Shea Gilgis Alexander. But it's still not a great spot defensively. Now, are we getting anything in the Stochastic Sims? The answer is very clearly no, but... 5% exposure to Bradley Beal, 3 to Kevin Durant. Does not appear that we're going to be getting to Phoenix all that much. I want to pop back over to Odd Shopper to see what we have. Jimmy Butler, under 21.5 points on Caesars. 7.2% expected value, the number one play that you can get to right now. Go grab it if you haven't done it already. It's right there for you if you're able to play at Caesars. Thunder, remember. No SGA, which means 35% ownership to Josh Giddy, 30 to Jalen Williams, around 10 to Lou Dort, a little over 10 to Isaiah Joe, 15 to Chet, and I got all of it. Phoenix defense is average. They play it like an average pace, and we have so much usage and ball handling to go around that we got to get here. I have 60% of Jalen Williams. He is my number two play on the day. I want all things Jalen Williams, J Dub seventy four hundred power forward only, and honestly, I think in a very nice spot in terms of getting to the rim today. I'm over on the thirty four percent owned Josh Giddy. He's in thirty nine percent of my lineups. The minutes bump is massive. The price still works, and he's a one point two five fantasy point per minute guy. Twenty three percent usage, a thirty percent assist rate, close to a fifteen percent rebounding rate. But I don't want to stop there. Give me the $4,500 small forward Dort, 2Xing him. Give me some Isaiah Joe, who played massive minutes in the first game without Shea. He's 3,700, shooting guard small forward, can obviously play his way into more if the shot is falling. Happy to be neutral. And then I'm over on Chet. Big time foul trouble last time out. Game couldn't have been much worse for him. I have 23% of the 14% on Chet. 1.25 fantasy points per minute, 23% usage, 14% assist rate, 
14% rebounding rate, three stocks. What's not to like here? Get to OKC, second best team on today's slate. They have 112% ownership. That is the second highest total behind Washington, and it's fully deserved. Now, we add another name to the list, if not two, if not three. 54% exposure to Josh Giddy. Write that name down. Put it on the list. Josh Giddy is part of the core for today. 29% exposure coming into Chet. Write that one down as well. I'm putting that guy in the core. There are There's three centers for you. They're, they're the three center priorities as far as I'm concerned. We also got the 27% Lou Dort. Write that name down as well. 4,500 small forward. We're getting three fantastic plays from OKC. Now, Stochastic, not as big of a fan of Jalen Williams as I am. I have him five fantasy points higher than we do. We'll see where that ends up as we get to live before lock. I'd imagine we end up meeting somewhere in the middle. They come up a little bit. I come down a little bit. Ultimately, love the idea of getting to Jalen Williams. He's a priority to me, but we can't add him to the list, even though he's in 60% of my stuff. Play the Oklahoma City Thunder, guys. They look incredible. The New York Knicks are nine and a half point favorites in San Antonio to 11 total here. Knicks have a Q tag on Alec Burks. We got Mitchell Robinson back last time out, played limited minutes. Spurs have a Q tag on Keldon Johnson. 10% ownership to DiVincenzo, 10% ownership to McBride, single digits everywhere else. Only McBride crossed the 10% mark. I got the 20% DiVincenzo. Single digits for everybody else. It's a great spot against San Antonio. Bottom 10 defense, top five team in pace. But we know what we're getting out of the Knicks. It's the same guys every time. They play big minutes. Their prices are stable. There's not a lot you can squeeze out of the Knicks at this point. 16% exposure to Miles McBride is the most we got. We aggressively faded Dante DiVincenzo. I think that's fine. Uh, I don't have too much that I care about for the Knicks. If you like it, DiVincenzo and McBride are the two guys you want. If you don't, I think it's pretty easy to also stay away from the Knicks. It's really easy to stay away from San Antonio. Knicks are 7th in defensive rating, 27th in pace. 3% ownership coming into Keldon Johnson is the most. Uh, Keldon also got to 7% optimal. No. I got 2% of Keldon Johnson. It's another team that no one has. We got to 7% of Keldon Johnson in the Stochastic Sim. Nothing else. I don't know what we would want to do here. I just don't see this as a, a particularly viable game. Like I have Wemby, 1.7 fantasy points per minute, 32% usage, 20% assist rate, 20% rebounding rate, uh, 5.1 stocks. What a hilarious line there. But even at 10-6, center only, we mentioned a lot of centers already that I definitely prefer. But there's just not a lot here to like for either New York or San Antonio. Um, We got Mikel Bridges under two and a half threes. That's been out for a while. Giddy under 28 and a half PRA on FanDuel is showing a five and a half percent expected value, 12 odd shopper rating. That would be the recommended grab for right now. Prior to us closing out the final game, Minnesota Timberwolves. And we're not going to be talking about anything here, by the way. Uh, San Antonio, 9% owned, one of the four lowest owned teams. This game, Minnesota and Denver, 20% owned. 20. This right here is the least owned game on the slate. Now, it's Q-Tag Anthony Edwards, Q-Tag Gobert. Gobert, 7% owned. Nothing else. I got to 2% of Edwards. We only got Gobert at 8% optimal. There is absolutely nothing here for us for Minnesota. They're in elevation. Both of these teams don't exactly play fast. Both of them are at least either amazing at defense or at the very least above average. This is the late night hammer, but the hammer is made out of cotton or tissue or any other soft material. Not a single share of Minnesota showed up in the stochastic sims. 
for Denver. By the way, there it is. Not a single share. Denver, 2% ownership to Gordon and Jokic. We have Jokic 4% optimal. That's the highest of anybody on the Nuggets. I got to 4% Jokic. There is nothing here, guys. Is it an awesome game to watch? Yeah, it is. I want to see this game for sure. Three line, three percent. Nikola Jokic in the stochastic sims. Hardwood highlights. I agree. They should have dropped this one, and I don't know why they didn't. But for all intents and purposes, it's also not on the slate. So there's nothing to like there, which means it is time to sum up the stochastic sim. Highest exposed guy right now, Marvin Bagley in the 70s. Josh Giddy, Miles Turner, and Kyle Kuzma are all in the 50s. AD is in the 40s. And then Tyrese Halliburton, Trendon Watford, and Cole Anthony are all in the 30s. The number one lineup coming out of the Stochastic Sim to start the day. Tyrese Halliburton, Ryan Rupert, Miles Bridges, Anthony Davis, Marvin Bagley, Misic, Watford, Turner. Good start. Good start. But now we run Fandle. Oh, ready for the weekend, guys. I am ready for the weekend. Everybody's working for the weekend. That's me. I work for the weekend. I'm ready to relax tomorrow. Got Liverpool Sunday morning. We're going to watch the second half while we do the strategy show. So that'll be fun. I'll just be screaming and yelling, sitting here watching Liverpool, talking about whatever Sunday games we have. I haven't looked at the slate, actually. Is it any good? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Probably an eight-gamer locking at six. That won't be too bad. Steven, you know I have the voice of an angel. Well, combination of Fergie and Jesus, man. I had 16% Nick Martini yesterday. It did not get me anywhere. That was a shame. Uh, prize picks video is already out for the day. Miles Turner is one of them. Chris Murray is the other, but you guys should go watch it either way. Follow me on Picket if you haven't yet for pick them sites and sports betting. I post every single play that I put in there. The moment they go in, you should 100% be following me on Picket. Um, what else? Don't forget to do this. Promo code DINGER, 30% off the MLB DFS package. Any package, whichever MLB package you click on, weekly, monthly, whatever you find for DFS, MLB package, 30% off. Promo code DINGER. Lots of dingers coming from the Atlanta Braves. Best team in baseball. We're just about done FanDuel here. Contenders, though, coming out after this. And I get to take a nice little break until we get the live before lock. Where are we at? Final. Coming down the home stretch. Number one lineup on FanDuel. Trey Mann, Vasily Misic, Hornet Stack, Jaden Ivey, Jared Butler. I hope we start naming real players. LeBron James, Kyle Kuzma, Miles Bridges, Chimetsi Metu, Marvin Bagley. Not going to lie, that lineup doesn't make me feel good about life. But it is still the top lineup on FanDuel to start the day. If we favorite the top 150 lineups. 69% exposure to Chimetsi Metu. 60 to Kyle Kuzma. 50s for Jared Butler. And then we drop off a cliff. Nobody in the 40s. But Alex Caruso, Tyrese Halliburton, Misich, Dort, Bridges, Miles that is, and Corey Kispert are all in the 30s. Do you guys have any questions for me before we get out of here? 
MLB strategy show is coming up next. Top O the hour. Do that. You're going to get Loffy and Greg breaking down tonight's slate on the baseball side coming up immediately after this. One last peek at Odd Shopper before we get out of here. Do we have any new plays that we can give out? Same as what we saw. Bet 365. Now, what's new? Do we have anything new? 5% uh, EV bet 365 under five and a half points for Mo Bamba at minus 105. Go get it, folks. Go get it. I, Smokey, won my first big field last night. It was only a piggy bank on FanDuel, 66,000 person field. Yo, just because it's the piggy bank doesn't mean it's not hard, man. Beating 66,000 entries is difficult. Congratulations. That's awesome. That's awesome. Best center play besides Metu on FanDuel. Okay. I'll bite. Really falls off a cliff, interestingly enough. Seems like the answer is either going to be Miles Turner or Marvin Bagley. And I mean, you can roster Bagley at power forward. So, like, in theory, that helps. But that's where we are. All righty, guys. I'm going to get on out of here. Shout out to Pick Six for being the sponsor. Dinger is the promo code. Sign up for Odd Shopper. Sign up for Lineup Generator on the NBA side or Sims on the NBA side for MMA or PGA or NASCAR. Whatever you're looking for, guys, we've got you covered. It's been a hell of a week. I love hanging out with you guys each day. I'll be back again on Sunday morning to chop it all up once again. But for today, we close it on out. This was the NBA Strategy Show. <laughs>